The Ernie Ball name is everywhere. It's on your guitar picks, straps, strings, cables, guitars, guitar pedals, and it's even on this shirt I'm wearing in a senior photo. Ernie Ball is a powerhouse in the guitar industry. But who's behind all of it? Hi, I'm Brian Ball uh, from the Ernie Ball Music Band Company. My grandfather, Ernie, started our business in 1962. Who was Ernie Ball? God, who was Ernie Ball? I mean, for me, Ernie Ball was kind of a hero of mine, even as a, as a young kid. My grandpa was a surfer, loved to fly airplanes, really adventurous. That's the way I always remember him. He was really the essence of what an entrepreneur is. He found his passion, and his one true passion was, was the guitar. He was so hell-bent on making his passion work for him, much like he was working for that passion. Went bankrupt three times, trying to open a, a guitar store um, in Los Angeles and in the Valley that, that only sold guitars. The guitar um, really came into prominence when it was starting to be used as like a lead voice in popular music with the British invasion hitting. And he was before that. And this was when big band was really popular and everyone was playing, you know, trombones and, and the guitar was stuck in, stuck in the back of the band playing just, you know, accentuating the, the, the music of big band. You know, up until 19, really about late 50s, early 60s, when Chuck Berry and uh, the Ventures and Merle Haggard and so these guys were bending their strings, he, you know, did selling guitars only was was kind of a not the smartest thing to do. Um, as that kind of came into popularity, his fortune or opportunity with selling only guitars changed. Tell the story of how Ernie Ball Slinkies came to be. Ernie Ball Slinkies were really founded out of the birth of, of rock and roll. I mean, our, our family and our company's roots are so entrenched in Southern California and, and the rock and roll scene that started to erupt here in, in, in the States, um, due in large part to the British invasion. The one true way that Slinkies were created were out, out of lessons and teaching. The story he had in Tarzana, he opened a teaching studio in the back because a lot of um, a lot of the students were wanting to learn how to play this new form of music that was um, originating. And he noticed that a lot of the students that were younger didn't have the strength or finger dexterity to, to bend the strings. At the time, the, an E string was anywhere from, I think at the lightest of 13, all the way up to a 15. They were really big and made again for, for rhythm instruments. Through that, he kind of noticed and saw an opportunity that, hey, we gotta make skinnier strings because the guitar's being played differently. People are wanting to express themselves different with the electric guitar, and some of that was bending. I mean, a lot of that is bending, and trying to bend 15-gauge E strings and play these solos that these heroes were playing was really challenging. Slinkies were, um, originally had banjo frailing strings as the plain strings. My, my dad and his brothers and sister, and sister would would be the kids that would come after school and hand coil these sets and take banjo strings and put them in these rock and roll guitar string packs. Um, my grandpa obviously had a store that he could sell those strings out of. And um, that was really the, the origins of it. He was the first to come out with strings with these gauges from nine to 42 to 10 to 46. And all the really common gauges that a lot of manufacturers use today were his recipes. The Ernie Ball volume pedal was a design that my grandpa had. He was a lap steel player and wanted to obviously control volume with it. A really close friend and employee, Ron Saul, um, that worked with him on the design, I believe in 1975. So we're going on, uh, what is that, 43, 44 years now. It's really kind of a testament to uh, attention to detail my grandpa had in, in his design, that, it, that it's still around 40 and relevant 44, 45 years later. You know, he wanted an indestructible housing and that, you know, using that anodized aluminum, the, nobody was making pedals out of that at that time. Um, the, the, the pulley system and the string um, system was a design idea that they had. It was really simple, but everything that we do starts with being functional and providing some kind of value. So that design is something we're, we're still incredibly proud of and it's something that, that we, we value tremendously, that design, and it's been an important pillar for the company.
Music Man was such a natural fit for us because of the connection and lineage that Fender has with Ernie Ball, and or I should say Ernie Ball has with Fender. After Leo had sold to, to CBS and had created Music Man with Tom Walker, who just so happened to be my dad's godfather, they wanted a young rock kid to come beta test this new Stingray bass guitar. You know, there's a lot of country players and funk players playing it, but they didn't have a lot, a lot of young rock kids. So my dad was an original, one of Leo's beta testers for the Stingray and played all around Newport Beach with this bass. It was Sterling, my dad, who really, really had a passion for making guitars and making basses and pushed to acquire the brand. And we did that in 1984. And I think there was a kind of an oh shit moment for him. It was like, okay, we bought it. Now how, how the heck are we gonna build these things? But there's been so many highlights of Music Man um, from the, the 90s when we signed Eddie Van Halen and that was another oh shit moment. How are we gonna scale to meet demand for Van Halen with you know the Forum Awful Carnal Knowledge record out and that record just was insane and blew up. And it was such an electric time for the brand. You know, Slinkies were on fire and the brand was, was really strong on the string side of things, but now you, now we were a real player on the guitar side of things. It wasn't just just the Stingray bass. And it wasn't just Eddie, it was guys like Steve Lukather, Steve Morris, Albert Lee, and really the guys that um, we built the foundation of the brand with is that it's, it's really for guys that want something that's extremely well crafted. It's made in the U.S and it plays as good as any guitar that's ever been made. Uh, St. Vincent was a really exciting time to work with her. She'd just come off being nominated for a Grammy. Her work with you know, Polyphonic Spree and her solo career and everything she's, she's, she's done in her career is, is, is really kind of creating new boundaries, which we love and we think that's so cool. And the way she expresses herself on the guitar and um, was such a natural fit for us. Annie's guitar was so fun for us to make because she came in with like, I kind of have this idea and it, it looks kind of like an Albert, but oh yeah, I like the Armada guitar and I like this guitar. And we like that she's not scared of doing something different. And she doesn't just want another shape that was the same shape designed in 1953. She wants something new. She wants to push us to create something new. And it's kind of our philosophy that, that neither man or machine can build the perfect guitar, but we believe the combination of both can make really the best guitar in the world. So what do you say we go build you a guitar? Let's do it. Let's do it. As Brian walked me through the factory to choose the different pieces for my guitar, I couldn't help but think about the amazing history of this company. Ernie Ball has embraced the new, but has always kept a deep value for its standards and the family history. Even with all the machines and amazing robots, this place still feels very human. It embodies the attitude of Ernie's adventurous spirit and his push to constantly innovate. It's okay to be a little different, and it's okay to have fun, and it's okay to not you know, through your packaging and your product, always take yourself so serious. And I'm lucky to have the opportunity to do what I get to do every day because of the work that he did and, you know, my dad did and our, our family's done, so. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I wanna give a huge shout out to Brian and the entire Ernie Ball family. They made us feel very welcome and it was an incredible experience to tour the guitar factory and get to know them a little bit better. It's a few weeks later now as I sit here and the guitar has arrived. It is amazing, it's everything we wanted it to be and I'm super excited to start playing it in some of the videos in the future. Speaking of that, next week I will use this exclusively on an episode Episode where I'm gonna play some classic distortion pedals. So you need to come and check that episode out. Hit like if you like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell icon and you'll get notifications of future episodes. And before you go, put in those comments what Ernie Ball products you own and products that you would like to own in the future. I'd love to read through that and kind of compare our notes. Have a wonderful day.